Welcome to Enterprise Manager product training series. This recording presents Managing Oracle WebLogic Server with Enterprise Manager. My name is Yutaka Takatsu. I am one of the product managers in Enterprise Manager product management team. In this session, I will talk about how you can use Enterprise Manager to manage WebLogic Server and the middleware infrastructure in general. First, I will briefly go through the feature sets we provide then talk about the details for each of the areas. Enterprise Manager provides several feature areas for managing WebLogic environments. In this slide, diagrams are shown in terms of how those capabilities are related to WebLogic administrator responsibilities. First, you discover the target, configure the metrics, and set up the alerting to receive notifications. And here, generic Enterprise Manager monitoring capabilities are available, such as out-of-the-box metrics, administration group, or incident management. From Enterprise Manager 13.4 release update 3, Grafana plugin is available. So we have a set of predefined dashboards for WebLogic server for the out-of-the-box use, which we will see later in this recording. And in regards to the end user monitoring, we have real user experience insight. In case of performance problem, you can use JVM diagnostic feature that allows you to narrow down to a thread, method, or a SQL that is running underneath, which may be causing the problem in your application. We also have an ability to assess, track, and manage WebLogic configurations. So you can ensure the expected configuration are set across the WebLogic servers, which you have in your data center. And as for the compliance management, there are out-of-the-box compliance rules that are specifically defined for WebLogic servers. And for administrations, you can configure your WebLogic server environment directly from the Enterprise Manager UI. Of course, you can do this from WebLogic Administration Console, but this is an alternative option. What you can do, you can start, stop, restart WebLogic servers, or you can run WLST scripts, or you can audit WebLogic operations. And lastly, lifecycle management. You can provision, clone, and patch middleware products. So you can search for what patches are available, run predefined deployment procedures to apply the patches to your WebLogic servers. So that was a very high level of middleware management capabilities in nutshell. Now let's take a closer look at each responsibility. Starting from the monitoring. And the first step to the WebLogic monitoring is to discover the targets. And there are multiple ways to do so in Enterprise Manager. The first option is to use the guided discovery process from Enterprise Manager console. This method discovers and adds each domain individually. So it is the best use if you only want to add one or two domains one by one. The second choice is to use EMCLI command. So this option discovers multiple domains in a single operation, which is the best method if you have several or many domains you want to add it to the Enterprise Manager. The third option here is to use the auto discovery. So this method discovers multiple domains across hosts on a repeated schedule basis. So it is best used if you're not aware of all the domains being installed in a data center. The screenshot in the lower side of the screen is the guided discovery page in Enterprise Manager Console. Basically, you fill in the access information to the WebLogic server, such as host name, port, login credentials, and which agent you want to use for the discovery. Then agent uses JMX protocol to connect to the WebLogic administration server to discover the targets. As you're using UI or EMCLI, once the discovery is done, Enterprise Manager will start the monitoring of the WebLogic domain and its member targets using the predefined metrics. So the monitoring is going to start right away after the discovery. And once you discover the target, where you particularly start the middleware monitoring is the middleware homepage. That is what I have in the screen. Here you can see all the WebLogic domain targets you have in your Enterprise Manager. It tells you what kind of deployment they have and what versions and their current status. 
Discovered targets include WebLogic domains, WebLogic servers, clusters, applications, and other FMW components, including node managers. And this summary page has filtering capability that allows you to narrow down the selection. So you can filter the list by the target type, by the status, or by custom target properties. And by clicking each node in the table, you can drill down to see the details of the each target. So for example, if I click the domain target, it opens up the target page that shows domain specific information, such as when was the last time the domain was refreshed, what servers are configured in the domain, and what applications are deployed. And you can further narrow down to the servers. So if I click one of the WebLogic server target, it opens up the target page and shows the details of the selected server. So here I see the target status and health information. I can also see the monitoring and performance information, most requested resources, and deployed objects. Now let's take a look at the metric and collection settings. WebLogic target type has more than 200 out-of-box metrics that are categorized in 36 different metric groups. Here, for each metric, you can specify critical and warning thresholds for raising an alert. You can also customize the metric collection schedule to meet your business needs. Enterprise Manager also provides performance summary page for each WebLogic server target, which is basically a dashboard of performance and availability metrics. It provides out-of-the-box chart with selected metrics, which include availability, CPU usage, number of active sessions, and so on. And these charts are customizable, so you can see the real-time data by default, or you can show historical data by adjusting the time range. So you can go back to time to see how was the performance of my server a week ago, for example. You can also add or remove chart by selecting metrics from the metric palette, which is showing the right hand side of the screen. And you can also save the chart view with a unique name. So this is a built-in dashboard feature in Enterprise Manager Console. Now in Enterprise Manager 13.4, you can also see the same information in Grafana Server. That is a topic I'm going to talk about next. As you may know already, Grafana is an open source technology for metric analytics and visualization. So starting from Enterprise Manager 13.4, release update 3, we have Enterprise Manager app for Grafana, which is ready to plug in to your Grafana Server. What this plugin does, basically it allows you to pull the metric data out from your Enterprise Manager repository and display it on the Grafana server user interface. We have REST API underneath the plugin that makes this happen. And the current release has a set of predefined dashboards for database bundled in the plugin. What comes in the near future is the middleware dashboards. We are currently working on to add WebLogic performance dashboards for the out-of-box use. Then how do these dashboards look like? Here's a screenshot of the performance summary dashboard of WebLogic server target type. In this dashboard, there are predefined metric charts such as CPU usage, heap size, memory, or number of active sessions. And the dashboard is fully backed up by the Grafana standard visualization capabilities, which means you can customize it in the way you want. You can change the time range to display the historical data, move around the chart to change the layout, or add new chart for different metric, or remove the existing chart. So you can also change the chart style from a graph to gauge or table or to heat map on your preference. Here is another out-of-the-box dashboard, which is predefined for JVM memory in particular. In addition to that, you can change the chart style or the dashboard layout. You can also easily change the data source of the chart. So this is where the data is coming from. So you can select another Enterprise Manager instance or a different target. That populates a dashboard with the data that is coming from a different data source. 
And one of the advantages using Grafana is to be able to easily create a single dashboard having the metric information that is coming from multiple different wheel logic domains or even from multiple enterprise manager deployments. And you can see them all together in a single view. The dashboard in this slide shows four panels of JVM memory usage information, but each of them has its own data source. So the data is coming from four different wheel logic domain targets. So these are the predefined dashboards. But you may want to create your own custom dashboard using enterprise manager metric data. How that can be done? Actually, building your own dashboard is easy in Grafana. So once you enable the EM plugin, the metric data is already populated in your panel. You can simply browse through the UI, select the target type, metric group, and metric that shows up in the same way you see in Enterprise Manager. Or you can actually write your own SQL as an alternative option. You can run a query against MGMT dollar views to pull the data out from the Enterprise Manager repository. So that was about the Grafana plugin. And as for the Enterprise Manager's monitoring framework capabilities, they are commonly available to all target types, and that includes WebLogic and other middleware targets as well. So in this slide, I have a list of features that are included in Enterprise Manager monitoring framework. And on top of the list is metric and collection settings. So Enterprise Manager ships with pre-configured monitoring settings. So you can start by customizing these out-of-the-box metric settings, which is one-time operation for each target type. And once you have a gold version of the monitoring settings, you can save that settings into the monitoring template and apply to the targets with the same target type. This way, you can standardize the monitoring setting across the board. You can apply the template manually, or you can automate the application process. And that is when you can use admin group. First, you need to define the group hierarchy. And technically, the group hierarchy is defined by target properties, such as lifecycle status equals to production, or department equals to sales. And as a final step, associate template collection, which is the package of the monitoring template. So if you have a new WebLogic server target with target properties, lifecycle status equals to production and department equals to sales, the target will be automatically added to the group where the target properties match and it gets the right monitoring template from the template collection. So using admin group, you can auto deploy the monitoring settings to the targets as they join the group. In addition to the out of the box metrics EM ships with, you can also create your own custom metrics that work just like the other metrics that EM provides. So for example, you can write an OS command script and create EM metrics from the output. Or for the middleware targets, you can select the MB and JMX attributes to create EM metrics from the result. Or you can write a SQL statement and create EM metrics from the query result. And that is fully supported by Enterprise Manager's metric framework. So what that means is that you can add thresholds, run corrective actions, get notifications, just like the other EM metrics. In some cases, when you get an alert, you know exactly what to do for the next action. So for example, say at the 3 a.m. in the morning, availability alert is raised, the message is, where logic server is down. Enterprise Manager receives that event, executes the corrective action right away. Shortly after, the issue gets resolved and alert is cleared. So this all happens automatically. So using corrective actions, you can resolve the issues automatically as an alert is raised. Incident rule. So this is a framework that manages response actions when an alert is raised, such as sending email notifications. So for example, when a metric threshold is crossed, EM raises a metric alert event. Incident rule engine detects that event and looks up the matching rules. Basically, the incident rule instructs EM for what to do in order to handle such event. So in this example, an incident is created, and that is assigned to the user John, who is a WebLogic administrator for this target. And in addition to that, 
email notification is sent out to John to let him know that there is an issue in his server. In addition to that, you can get email notifications. You can forward the EM's alert information to third-party systems. And that is where you can use connector service. So for example, you can automatically create a service ticket in external third-party systems, such as ServiceNow, BMC, or CA, based on the alert information that EM has generated. And then actually, EM has its own ticketing systems, and that is Incident Manager. So you can centralize the alert management with dedicated console, view, manage, and diagnose incident in one location. Here you can filter the incidents. Here shows the list of incidents, and down here shows the details of the selected incident. When you have planned target maintenance, you don't want to receive alerts from the targets because you know you're going to bring them down. So you can use Blackout to stop receiving alerts during the planned maintenance time. And there are two types of Blackout, traditional Blackout and notification Blackout. Both of them stop sending you alerts, but underlying mechanism is slightly different. Blackout, this is an agent-side operation and suspends the entire target monitoring. Because there is no target monitoring, no alerts you get. Notification blackout, on the other hand, is purely an OMS side operation. So it continues to monitor targets during the specified period. It just suspends a notification. So those are the differences. And lastly, always on monitoring. So using this feature, you can receive email alerts during the planned enterprise manager downtime. It runs standalone without the EM, so it can be always on regardless of the status of the enterprise manager. And as you can see in the diagram, it runs on top of the EM topology. Agent sends alert information to both AOM and OMS. So when Enterprise Manager is brought down for the downtime, AOM continues to run and sends out email notification to administrators. So that was a quick overview of the monitoring capabilities that you can use for web logic management. And before we move over to the next topic, let me show you how you can create JMX-based metric extensions. First, you need to go to metric extension page and select JMX adapter. And once that is done, click Browse MBeans button, and this will open up a window where basically you can specify what JMX attributes you want to use for your custom metric. And once the metric extension is created, you can deploy it to your WebLogic targets, or you can deploy it onto a monitoring template where you can do a mass deployment to the multiple WebLogic targets. OK, so that was about the generic monitoring. Now I would like to shift our focus a little bit towards the business application monitoring. Enterprise Manager has integrated application-centric functionalities, which are the services, service level management, and real user experience insight. And service, this is one of the target types in Enterprise Manager. This can be any business function that is useful for you. And you define that as a service and monitor with Enterprise Manager. And service could be a system-based service, which is a group of related targets, or a test-based service, which can be based on REST API or SOAP-based web services, or a SQL query, for example. And once you define the service and start to monitor that as a managed target, you can also set up SLA to measure the expected service levels. So that's the service and service level management in Enterprise Manager. Another application-centric functionality we have is Real User Experience Insight, or RUI in short. And RUI, this is a passive monitoring tool and it captures all the end user activities in your application. So it allows you to see what those users are doing in your application and monitor the performance from the end user perspectives. We will take a closer look on Rui in the next few slides. So let's start from knowing what questions Rui can answer. At the left-hand side of the screen, we have is an internal business application. And there is an IT administrator who manages that application. And say, there was a page editor. So users of this application could not load the page. They called up the administrator about this problem. However, the administrator could not reproduce the problem in his end. 
So he is wondering what exactly was the error which the users were seeing. Another example, now we have an online shopping website that is publicly open through the internet. And there is a business application owner wondering how many customers actually came to my store in the last 24 hours and what percentage of them actually purchased my product. So these are the questions that Rui can answer. An IT administrator can see the full session report of what exactly happened during the error time. He can further diagnose the issue using JVM diagnostics feature in Enterprise Manager and drill down to the root cause. And business application owner can see the traffic statistics and based on the KPI threshold, he can raise an alert and receive email notification. So this is a high level introduction on what questions Rui can answer. This slide explains how Rui works in Nutshell. What I have here in the left hand side of the screen is my application. So we have a real user on the top accessing the application through the internet or through the internal network and that is a blue globe icon. And inside the network, there is a network tap device that we use for Rui. So this is a hardware device that captures the network traffic and send us a copy of that traffic. The video recorder icon in the center of the screen, this is a Rui collector. It is one of the Rui components and sees all the traffic that goes into and goes out from the application. And the traffic Rui captures is HTTP. So user makes a request from the browser to the application server that is a HTTP request. And that can be a request to see a login page, for example. And Rui captures this request. And the captured information includes client IP. This is from which IP the request came from. Also the location of the user. It also captures the requested URL HTTP request headers, session IDs, and cookies as well. And next to happen is a server returns a response to the user. And Rui also see that information. For example, in this case, server returns the login page to respond to the user's request. The captured information here includes response headers and response time and actual page content. In case of any error page you return to the user, for example, 404 page not found or 500 server errors, Rui sees that as well. So it captures the information, stores into the Rui repository database so that later on you can take a look and diagnose a problem. And there is a third step, which is the browser acknowledgement. So this tells us whether the page was successfully delivered or not. And if it was not delivered, it also tells us why it wasn't. So for example, maybe the user aborted the page load on his own before the page load completes. Or maybe the page load was timed out because of the network error. So from this data, we can know what experience each user had. So this is how Rui works in Nutshell. Next, let me show you in-slide demo of some of the capabilities that Rui has. Rui has separate installation from Enterprise Manager, but it also has integrated user interface with EM. So there are two user interface you can select to use. One is a standalone version and another is the EM version. What you see here on the screen is the EM version. As you already know at this point, Rui captures all the traffic in regards to the user sessions. However, in case of problems, you don't want to see every session data. You only want to see the focused portion of the traffic which you are interested in. The screenshot in this slide shows the session diagnostics page where you can see the list of user sessions and this can be also filtered. So the list in the screen is already filtered by a specific application uh, which is a wine seller application and also filtered by a user ng operator and by a specific client ip within a specific range of time so i want to see the details of the first session in the list then i can click the icon in the info section and that opens up the full session replay page 
it has the request header and response header information, response content in the raw HTML, also in the rendered HTML. So if a user says he or she could not open the page because of the server error, and if you happen to be the person to investigate that, this functionality allows you to go back to time and see the page which the user actually saw in his or her session. So I was able to see the session details in HTTP level, but in case of problems, I also want to further diagnose that by tracing the session down to the thread level. This page allows me to do so by clicking the red O icon. And this punches me out to open Java Workload Explorer page, where you can perform deep dive diagnostics for the selected ESIT or execution context ID. From here, using JWE or Java Workload Explorer, you can narrow down to the specific thread in the Java application, or even a SQL running underneath that may be causing the problem. And Java Workload Explorer, so this is a feature in JVM Diagnostics, which we will cover more about in the next Diagnostics section. Another interesting feature in Rui is the user flows. So this is a collection of web pages and actions that defines a logical task. Basically, it is a certain type of web transaction that I would like a customer to perform. A typical example can be a shopping cart transaction. First, you log into the application, browse a product, add it to the shopping cart, check out, and purchase. So in this case, it's a four-step transaction. That is the user flow. And Rui can tell you how many of your customers went through the transaction and how many of them actually finished the entire process. So in terms of the four-step example we have, that's like how many of my customers actually purchased the product and how many of them came to the site but left without buying anything at which step. So that's the information you can get from Rui. And when the customer left in the middle of the user flow and he or she did not finish the process, that is considered as user abort. And if the customer's abort rate exceeds your expectation, you can configure to receive an alert. And that is KPI, which is the metric alert mechanism in Ruby. Let's take a closer look on one of the KPI metrics. In this example, KPI is set to raise an alert when the percentage of the abort page is more than 10%. And here is the configuration page where you can create and edit the KPI. And in this example, the client abort is selected as a metric for this KPI, but there are a wide range of metrics that you can select from in order to create a new KPI. And lastly, KPI threshold violations generate EM events. So you can use Enterprise Manager's incident and notification framework to receive and manage alerts, just like you can receive alerts from other EM targets. That was about discover monitoring alert in middleware management. Key takeaways. There are three ways to discover WebLogic domains. You can use guided discovery to add one or more domain, or you can use EMCLI to add multiple domains, or use auto discovery process to run the discovery in the schedule basis. Midware homepage, this is where you can centralize the monitoring of the multiple WebLogic domains. Performance summary page is a customizable dashboard where you can see the target performance and availability status. And from the Enterprise Manager 13.4 RU3 release, we have Grafana plugin that you can visualize EM data on your Grafana servers. It has out-of-the-box dashboards, which are predefined for Enterprise Manager target types, and WebLogic dashboards are currently on the way. And most importantly, WebLogic monitoring is fully supported by the Enterprise Manager's standard monitoring framework capabilities. And you can use out-of-the-box predefined metrics to start the monitoring right after the discovery, then customize the metrics. You can also create JMX-based metric extensions. As a part of the Enterprise Manager's business monitoring solution, there are services and service level management. Also, Rui that offers customer-centric monitoring and deep dive analysis and diagnostics.
We will be moving on to the next topic, problem diagnostics. So here we have an application administrator who often has to diagnose Java in production environment. But why does he have to do so? That is because the problems happen in production and he can't reproduce them in his internal environment and he can't wait for the next planned downtime to fix the problem. Then what are the common issues seen in production? Those can be intermittent availability issues, auto memory issues, or could be the application crash or timeouts. And those happen because of the situations which wasn't expected to happen. Then what is the solution for these problems? And there are some requirements in order to run diagnostics in production. First of all, the solution has to be always available. No downtime is allowed because that is the production environment. Therefore, instrumentation of the code or recompiling of the application are not allowed neither. And overhead has to be constant, low, and stable. Impact to the production should be minimal. Wide range coverage, secured access, full range of detailed JVM metrics. And these are actually the features that JVM diagnostics provide. So JVMD has a solution. Let me briefly show you the JVMD architecture. In high level, JVMD consists of JVMD engine, which is a core analytical portion of the JVMD monitoring system, and JVMD agents, which are the data collectors of the target JVM. And JVMD agents are deployed inside the managed application servers and collects real-time JVM monitoring data. The collected data is transmitted to JVMD engine directly using SSL. So this is a high-level picture of how JVMD works behind the scenes. And JVMD is primarily designed to be able to diagnose Java performance problems in production environment. And because we sample the information directly from the application's JVM and use that information for the real-time analysis, there's no need for you to reproduce the problem in the separate QA environment. It basically eliminates the reproduction process, thus reduces the time to the recovery. Some key features. First of all, it is always on, available all the time. And you can find the problems such as the slowest request or the slowest methods, or the request waiting for the I.O. or database, or a request using a lot of resources such as CPU or memory. And no application instrumentation or the recompiling is needed to use this tool. Therefore, no downtime is required in the application for the debugging. And it has constant and low overhead, so the impact to the production is minimal, while having a complete visibility into all layers in JVM stack, such as request, thread, heap, and garbage collections. And JVMD has its own metric management capability. So you can set up a metric, which is JVM specific, and configure a collective action to take a heap dump, for example, upon the metric violation. It also has integration with Java Flight Recorder, or JFR. So you can start the recording of JFR snapshot from EM, or you can configure to take the snapshot automatically at the threshold violations. You can also export the snapshot and import into Java Mission Control desktop application and run any analysis there. JVMD has integration with Enterprise Manager's database performance capabilities. So when you find a particular JVM thread that is waiting for database, you can drill down to find a particular SQL that may be causing an issue. As for the Java Workload Explorer, we'll see in the next slide with more details. Java Workload Explorer. So this is the centerpiece of JVMD, where you can visualize entire JVM stack information, time by resource, and resource utilization. So what I have here in the screen is the Java Workload Explorer homepage. I have a bar chart on the upper side of the screen, and each bar represents a thread that is grouped by the state, such as database weight or CPU weight. So you can see by the color what resource the thread is waiting for. 
down here in the table shows the requests that are running in the selected time range. It shows how long they are running, how many times they appear, and the resource utilization information such as memory allocation or CPU. And this table is actually multidimensional. So by clicking the buttons in the top, it displays information for other dimensions. So currently, it is showing the request. But you can flip the screen to show methods, threads, or database resources, for example. Then how can this be helpful for you to diagnose a problem? The core functionality of this tool is that it allows you to compare the workloads. So now you see in this screen, there are two bar charts displayed. And in the table at the lower side of the screen, each column has two sets of data, current and baseline, side by side. So basically, you take a snapshot of baseline workload. And usually, the baseline was the time when the problem was not present, so it's a stable workload. Then bring that onto the screen for comparison. From there, you can carefully analyze what would be the difference between the two. And as mentioned, the table view is multidimensional. If you cannot spot a root cause in one dimension, you can switch the view to other dimensions to find the difference. So in this case, I opened a tab having method information. And here I could see a method present in the current data set. However, it does not exist in the baseline. This implies a change, and that could be the cause of the slowness in the application. That may be enough information for me to go to the developers, but I can further see the call stack to see in which file the particular method resides. And actually, JVN Diagnostics works the best with Rui, and together it offers an APM solution in Enterprise Manager. First, use Rui to identify the problem and gather related information, pass that onto JVN Diagnostics, and go deep into the code. So that was about the JVM Diagnostics. Some key takeaways. JVM Diagnostics provide in-depth monitoring of Java applications with minimum impact. So it helps you find performance issues and drill down to root cause. You can access real-time as well as the historical data. It has constant and raw overhead, so it has least impact to the production load. And no downtime is needed to use JVMD, and that's why you can use it in the production. And Java Workload Explorer, this allows you to visualize all layers in JVM stack, and also allows you to compare data sets, which is current and baseline workload, to find what are the difference between the two. And that is how you can identify the root cause of the problem. And lastly, Rui and JVMD together consist APM solution in Enterprise Manager. All right, moving on to the next topic, configure, comply, and administer. So we just talked about a troubleshooting application. When you found a root cause of the problem, many times you need to change the configuration of the servers. And one way of doing so is to go to WebLogic Administration Server. But if you have multiple domains and servers, you have to open separate browser pages to log into each of the admin servers, which could be a lot of work. The good news here is that you can also do this from Enterprise Manager Console. Here you can access the management console of any WebLogic target monitored by EM and modify the settings directly from Enterprise Manager. You can also start, stop, and restart the servers from EM console. But you may have hundreds of domains reside on different hosts and need to make configuration changes across the data center. Then you don't want to do this one by one. In this case, you can use Enterprise Manager's job system to schedule and track the execution of WLST scripts. You can write your own custom script and roll it out to the domains. You can also audit user operations that are specific to WebLogic. So this will track who did what and when type of information related to WebLogic. For example, Audited data includes successful and unsuccessful login, so you can further see who logged in or who attempted to log in with more details. So it tells you user's IP and also machine information. And this feature is not enabled out of the box, so if you want to use, there is an EMCLI command to enable it. Also, this feature is accessible only by the super administrator. 
So those were the few of the things that you can do to manage WebLogic from Enterprise Manager Console. Now let's talk about the configurations. Once the WebLogic domain target is discovered, Enterprise Manager automatically starts to collect configuration data from the domain. So in the daily basis, it collects the configuration information from WebLogic server settings and collects data from configuration files such as config.xml. Also, the patching history, what patches are applied to the server. So Enterprise Manager has a vast amount of configuration data collected from all of your WebLogic targets daily. And you can run analysis on it in a variety of ways. For example, you can compare the configuration data among the targets with the same target type in order to detect the differences to maintain the consistency. Or you can compare the configurations with security standards to ensure the compliance. And those are the topics I'm going to talk about next. So one thing you can do in Enterprise Manager with a massive amount of configuration data collected from your WebLogic target is to enable the continuous drift management. But what is drift management? So this is the comparison of configuration data on an ongoing basis among a large number of similar targets of the same target type. Then how we can do this, the first you need to come up to a gold version of the configuration. So this is a set of the configurations which you want all of your WebLogic server targets to have. That is your master template. Then run a comparison with all the WebLogic servers in the data center and detect the differences. So what I have here is the configuration drift homepage open in my screen. And here in the table view, it shows the master reference of configuration data. So node manager configuration has to be present and server information has to be set to 300. Here are the configuration of the member targets that I am comparing against. And I can see some of the values are drifted from the master template. So these are the values you want to fix. And this is not a one-time comparison. It runs on ongoing basis. So I can also set the notification to alert me when any of these configurations are changed. So that's a quick overview of the drift management. You can also use the Enterprise Manager to compare configurations against industry standards, like the Security Technical Implementation Guide, or STIG in short. This was designed by the U.S. Department of Defense and created for them to ensure the security of their WebLogic deployments. And how to use this is very straightforward. Deploy it to the targets and the comparison starts right away and continue to do so. You can also configure to receive an alert notification upon security violations. And there are more than 70 rules which are predefined for stake compliance for WebLogic. And these are shipped with Enterprise Manager. Current supported stick version for WebLogic is 1.2, but we are also working on to implement the latest stick version, which is 1.6. Okay, so the key takeaways for this section, you can use Enterprise Manager Console to perform administration operation against WebLogic domain and servers. And what you can do, you can change the server parameters from Enterprise Manager Console. You can also start, stop, and restart WebLogic servers, write a WLST script, and schedule and track the execution. You can also audit WebLogic operation, and all these you can do from Enterprise Manager Console. Enterprise Manager also collects massive amount of configuration data in daily basis, so you can compare and analyze that data among your targets for drift configuration management. There is a stick compliance standard, which has more than 70 out-of-box compliance rules shipped with Enterprise Manager. So you can use it to ensure the security compliance. Moving on to the last topic, which is the lifecycle management, patching and provisioning. Let's first understand the patch management challenges. So this is when you don't have Enterprise Manager to help you applying patches. And actually, there are a number of manual steps involved in patching each WebLogic server manually. First, you need to go to My Oracle Support and download patches. 
Once the patches are downloaded, you will need to manually transfer the binaries to all the target hosts where your WebLogic domain reside. Then for each WebLogic domain, shut down the servers, run all patch utility to apply the patch. Once that is done, restart the servers and verify the successful patch application. And you have to do this for each target. So these steps have to be manually repeated on every WebLogic server or domain on every host. This is a tedious task. Also, because of that, it could lead to human errors. Then what about using a custom script to automate the patching process? That could work to some extent, but it requires significant maintenance overhead to keep the script up to date. So this is still not an easy option. The solution Enterprise Manager can offer is the automation of the patch process. Enterprise Manager is going to recommend you a patch based on the targets and versions, and it will roll out the patches to multiple hosts, and then for each domain, deploy the patch in a rolling fashion. So this is a high level of how Enterprise Manager can automate the patch process. And here I have a screenshot of the patch and updates homepage. You can either enter a patch number or enter the product name and search for the available patches, or you can ask for recommendations for what patches should be applied to your target. Based on the selected patches, you create a patch plan and deploy it to the targets. There is a step-by-step -step guided flow which will navigate you to do this. Okay, the last topic in this session is the provisioning. In order to provision WebLogic domains, you need to go to middleware provisioning homepage, which is showing as a screenshot in this slide. And you can provision WebLogic domains either from the installation media or existing WebLogic domain or Oracle Home. So if you don't have any existing WebLogic domain added to your enterprise manager yet, installation media is where to start. For this option, you need to download the installation file from OTN or eDelivery and create a profile out of that. If you already have WebLogic domains, then you can clone the existing domain. Basically, it will create a copy of your source domain in a different location. Oracle Home, so this option also creates a copy, but only binaries and not a domain configuration. So if you want to add configurations later manually, this is a choice. Either case, once you create a profile and save it to the software library, you can launch it many times as you want for the repeated provisioning of the WebLogic domains in Oracle Homes. And there are out-of-the-box deployment procedures provided for middleware provisioning. And these deployment procedures have a predefined sequence of steps that are designed to perform the provisioning. Key takeaways for this section. You can automate the patch application to WebLogic servers across domains. That reduces the time and the amount of the resource you may be using for the manual patching. You can also provision or clone WebLogic domains or Oracle Home. You can save the provisioning profile to the software library for the repeated deployments in the future. That ensures the consistent and standardized deployment across the data center. This is the end of the recording of managing Oracle WebLogic server with Enterprise Manager. Thank you for watching.